Hi, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to this video. What we're going to do today is we are going to look at code in Arduino sketch that one of the students in the premium course sent to me and he asked if I could find some improvements for it. So what he did was a challenge, one of the challenges in the course, and what he had to do was get three LEDs to blink in sequence and then uh, blink back in sequence. And he had to have two potentiometers and what the potentiometers would do is one would adjust the delay time between the blink of each LED and the other would adjust the illuminosity of the LED using like the uh, pulse width modulation. So one pot adjusted the timing, the other pot adjusted the uh, illuminosity. And uh, he wrote the code and the code works just fine. Um, but he asked, you know, hey, is there anything you think I could improve? And uh, I think that's a great attitude to take because I think there's always room for improvement. So that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to go ahead and jump in, look at his code, look how he did it, and then look at ways of tightening it up. So there's really three themes that kind of jump out, uh, I think, as we, as we go through this. And I want you to kind of keep in mind. So one is that naming conventions for variables uh, can be very important for readability. Um, also, kind of in that same context is having good comments. That's also an important part. That way it, it helps explain your code. Uh, the other thing is when you write a program, and I, and I actually I recommend this to a lot, uh, a lot of people when they're writing programs, is to use existing code and modify it for your purposes. Uh, that can get you uh, much quicker to the result you're looking for. And what happens sometimes though is when you do that, code that's not necessary for the function of the program kind of just gets stuck in the program. It just, unless you take it out of there, um, it's just going to sit around and it kind of clutters up the program a little bit and it's not necessarily adding value. Um, so we'll just talk about removing some of those uh, unused appendages. And then finally, the last thing I look at is, you know, every program essentially is just an algorithm. It's, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, and then we're applying that, 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 those steps over and over and over again. And so what we look at in, in this sketch is how can we improve the, out, the base algorithm that, uh, that Arthur, the student, is, here is using. Okay, so before we jump in, this, I want to challenge you to something. I think this would be a great exercise because I imagine you right now watching this video, you're probably trying to learn Arduino code, you know, Arduino circuits, that type of thing. This is what I challenge you. Go to the Open Source Hardware Group website. Follow it down in the description of this video. There's a link to the website. I want you to go there and I want you to click on the debugging in Arduino sketch for this video. It's going to be number three. And what I'm going to have there is the original student code, okay? I'll also have this video posted there. And I'll just, you know, have a little write-up about the, about the video. But I want you to go ahead and copy the code. You can just uh, get the code right here. And, you, you know, you can copy it. And what I want you to do is copy it all and then paste it into your Arduino IDE to take a look at it. I'll also have the the uh, diagram for setting up the circuit and the the initial challenge and then what I want you to do is you know pretend you're in my shoes and somebody sent you a sketch and they're saying hey you know how could I how could I potentially improve this and then what I want you to do before you watch the rest of the video do that and then come back to the video and see if we get the same results I think if you're trying to get the most out of out of this video or out of this course that would be just one recommendation to take so Hey, all right, okay, and then one final, um, before we jump in, I hope this doesn't take too long, but one final note. You know, I'm no super Arduino code ninja guy. Uh, you know, I'm just a hobbyist. I've been doing this for a while. I have seen some good programming conventions. And so just because I do it a certain way doesn't mean, you know, that's the, the necessarily the right way to do it. There's like a million ways to write, write a piece of code. Um, and so keep that, keep that in mind as you watch what I'm doing. You know, take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, but, uh, you know, all right, so that's about it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this is Arthur's code that he sent me. I just pasted it right into the Arduino IDE. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to Tools, and I'm going to say Auto Format. And that just helps kind of format the code for me, make it look nice. So, you know, let's just do a quick overview of what Arthur did here. He's got, you know, three basic blocks of code. The first one is where he is declaring and initializing variables. He does it at the very top of his program. Then he's got a setup. Looks like he's setting the output of some pins. Then he's got void loop. And in void loop, it looks like this first part is what he's doing is 
he is sampling his sensors. So he's got essentially two analog pins, A0 and A1, and they're reading the values at the associated potentiometers. And he's, so he's recording that value, assigning those to a variable, and uh, that's what he does up here. And then those variables are what he uses down here in two separate for loops to apply the brightness of the LED. That would be analog right. So again, analog right uses pulse width modulation. You can pass it a number between 0 and 255, and that's going to determine the uh, you know apparent brightness of the LED. So he uses one of the potentiometers there, the value from the potentiometer, and then the other value he uses for the delay before the blink. So he's writing low voltage here. So what these for loops do is one, increments it's a plus plus sign so it goes through that for loop and then the other one decrements it goes back so you know he had those three LEDs it would be one two three and then it would go backwards it would say three two one that's how he's getting the LEDs to go forward and back with two for loops so I mean overall it looks good and again it, it does work uh, just fine so the first thing I am going to take a look at is the variable naming and you know analog in pin doesn't isn't descriptive enough in my opinion for um, a variable. So what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say something like this: fade pot pin for fade potentiometer pin. And I'm setting that at a zero, and then I will do the same. I'm going to add another one here, and I'm going to call it timer pot pin. So now I have two very descriptive variable names that tell me a little more than analog input. Not that analog input pin was necessarily that bad. And then I'm just going to make a little comment here and say these are the uh, potentiometer pin numbers. Okay, and then I've got three more variables down here. Now this line of code right here, analog out pin equals nine, this is one of those leftover pieces of code uh, that I was mentioned in the introduction. So if you note in his, uh, let's see, in his comments at the top, he mentions he was using the read analog voltage example. And so that was probably where analog out pin nine was being used. So what I'm gonna do is just, uh, I'm just gonna comment out this code for now, just to make sure we won't need it, but I'm pretty sure we don't for what, um, what uh, we need to do. And then the other thing is we've got two variables here, and these variables look like they are tracking the, they're the variables that are gonna track what gets read at these pins. So I'm gonna also change the name of these variables so that they're a little more straightforward. I'll name the first one fade amount, and I'll name the second one timer. So again, all I've done really, I haven't changed the context of the code, or, you know, the content of the code. I've just kind of changed the, the look and, you know, the naming of the code, the naming convention there. Okay, so uh, the next thing we've got here, he declares and initializes an array. I think that looks great. And then he's got pin count. That's the number of pins in the array. That also looks fine. Now let's take a look at setup void setup here. All right, so one thing I do, and you know, this looks great, he's using a for loop and an array to set all the pins as, uh, set the pin mode as outputs for all the pins. So one thing I do is when I see a closing curly bracket, I like to know exactly what it closes. And so I'll just make a little comment there, and I'll do that for setup also. Now you might say, well, hey, you know, when you put your cursor there, it puts a block at the opening curly bracket and vice versa puts at the closing when you put your cursor at the opening. But uh, this is just a little more explicit to me. And when you start getting a lot of nested loops and, and for statements and all that type of stuff, it, I think it makes it easier to read. So that's like a readability thing. Again, it might just be a micism, but okay. So there's setup, looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and save what we've got so far. And uh, let's go down to void loop. So what he does here is he, again, he's reading the value at the potentiometer, and then he is assigning that value to a variable. So that's what we want to do, and that's kind of what's taking place. That's all of this right here is what is going on. So uh, again, I think we have a little vestigial code in here. 
Uh, one of those is this float voltage. We don't think we need that. And I think I can get rid of this declaration here because we kind of already did that. Um, we don't need to print anything, do any serial printing. I'll turn that off. These um, opening and closing curly brackets are unnecessary. You can get rid of those. We won't need a delay, so I'll just kind of close that off. Um, again, same thing for this delay. I'll get rid of these opening and closing curly brackets. Close, uh, comment that out. And what I'm going to do is replace uh, the pin numbers, the pin numbers with the new variables that we set. So A0 is fade pot pin. So that's this guy right down here. And A1 was timer pot pin. Okay, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to change sensor value. So this is going to, again, change to fade amount to follow the new variable name convention that we went with. And then notice what we do here. We've got output value equals map. So remember, when we read an analog input using analog read, the value is going to be from 0 to 1,023. But when we write, do an analog write, we actually want to write from 0 to 255 because that's the range that analog write can take. So this is an important line of code, but we need to change this to fade amount because, again, this is the variable that we will be getting back. So fade amount, that's what we're getting back. And then we'll have to make a new variable. We'll just do it right here. We'll say int. Uh, fade. Unless I did, did I do that already? No, I didn't. Why don't we do it up here? Make a new one. I'll call it. Uh, okay, so there's fade. So this will become fade is equal to the map value of fade amount. So fade amount is kind of like the raw reading that we get from the analog read function. Then we're going to map that to the correct range. And then we're using analog write. And we want to. Uh, write that. So again, this analog write uh, output value, I think this is again a, a vestigial piece of code and it's unnecessary. So let's go ahead and take this, and cut that out, and put it up here. And then finally, this I need to uh, make just so this was going to be timer. I don't. So, okay, so basically all we really did here was just tighten up the code, reduced it to a couple lines of code, and then we can pretty much get rid of of this stuff. Okay, so again, removing code that's not, uh, was kind of left over from a previous program. And then let's just make a comment here. We'll say sampling analog pin. Okay, now let's go to these for loops. And let's basically, right now, I think all we need to do is change some variables. So this is going to be analog write. We're going to write to this array, but we're writing output value. And now output value is going to be fade amount. Actually, it's going to be fade. So let's just change output value to fade. And we can do that in both of these loops. And then delay timer, that's still right. We're using the timer, so that should work. And then, uh, you know, the other thing I noticed, he uses analog write here to turn off the LED. So he writes, he uses pulse width modulation using the analog write function to write this value fade, so it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 255. So 0 is going to be off, basically, and 255 will be as bright as it can get. Um, but then he uses analog write again to turn them low, and this works fine. But you know, I think digital write is a little more appropriate. So let's just use digital write there, and I'll do that in both of these. Notice, you know, the function has not changed at all so far. The function of this program stays the exact same. I just Tried to clean it up a little bit, uh, what was, in my opinion, uh, cleaned up. So now what I want to do is take a look at um, the board again. And what I want you to notice is how, how, this, how the brightness and the timing get updated. So when we enter the loop, the first thing we do is we sample the potentiometers. We get a time, a, a number between 1,000 and 23. And then we get a fade amount between that ends up being between 0 and 255. And then we go through the entire for loop. So we turn, we essentially, we're going to turn on three LEDs, and then we're going to turn off three LEDs. And it's going to go in a sequence. And this value, this fade and this timer, it never gets resampled from when it begins. Okay. 
So if you, if we had this all the way open, timer pot pin, let's say we were getting the number 1,000. So that's one second because delay is in milliseconds. So we would be delaying one second. So there's six LEDs that turn on and off, or actually there's three LEDs, but each one turns on and off uh, twice. So we are looking at six seconds to complete that, that loop. So what happens within that six seconds if I change the position of the potentiometer? Well, the answer is nothing happens because we don't update the reading of that, of that value until we complete the loop. So once we got to go through this for loop, this for loop, then we go back up to the top, we resample, and then we adjust. Well, what about this, the fade amount? So again, let's just pretend that timer is 1,000, so we're delaying 1,000 between each of these blinks. So that's going to be a total of six seconds. What if in that six seconds I adjust the other potentiometer and I adjust the fade amount, you know, to, to adjust the fade? Well, the brightness of the LEDs that, su that subsequently light up is going to remain the same initially. It won't change because, again, it was sampled once and it has to go through all these for loops. So if you change it while this is happening, either of those potentiometers, the program doesn't respond until it gets back up to the loop. So what I, what I propose is that we take this code, this sampling code, I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to put it right inside both of the for loops. Does that make sense? So now, every time we go through the for loop, we resample the timer and we resample the fade amount. And let's add just a quick comment. Okay, so now let's, let's talk through this code. So now we enter the for loop, we sample. We turn an LED on based on the, uh, the brightness based on what we just sampled. And then we delay on the amount of time that we just sampled. Now we go this, and then we turn the LED off uh, after that time. We go back through the for loop and we look at the next LED. And what if, I adjusted that potentiometer. Well, we would now see it. We'd get a new value. We get a new value for timer and we get a new value for fade. And so that new value is what gets written here. So what happens is the for loop now becomes responsive, much more responsive to uh, me changing the potentiometers. And it's the same down here. So we'll uh, just verify that, make sure it looks good. And then what I can do is I can even get rid of this code up here because now that we're sampling inside the for loops, we don't need to do it uh, at the top. We'll just verify that again, we'll upload it, and we're good to go. All right, so now it's uploaded. Let's take a look at the boards. So now you can see the, the circuit is a little more responsive to when I move the potentiometers now. It's kind of happening instantly, you know, as I do it, that dynamic adjustment. So, hey, overall, Arthur, man, fantastic job on writing this code, great job. Um, the stuff I did, almost most of it was pretty much a nitpicky. So um, great job, and I hope this was helpful. Hope this was helpful to everybody watching too, and I really recommend take a look at that original code, and I hope, I hope that's what you did before you uh, watch the entire video. So have a great day. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.